It's been an emotional time and emotions are the enemy of responsible savings and investing. Anthony Williams, president of Mosaic Financial Associates, joins us today to talk about the recession, your emotions, and how to handle both as it relates to money right now. And Anthony, um, I'll tell you, I'm taking a deep breath right now because it has been very bumpy. It's been very weird uh, with the recession up and down, money moving around and stuff. And, and again, I've been playing with my emotions. I've been doing the stock a little bit, selling, buying, selling, buying with how scared I am. And that's something I got to stop doing. Am I right? You are 100% right. Uh, in fact, we spend an extraordinary amount of time dealing with investor behavior, investor decision making. The reality is returns are what they are. But I'll give you a real life example. There's a fund. It's called the CGM Focus Fund that is coming to an end. It was the number one performing fund of the decade from 2000 to 2009, 18% annualized returns. But the average investor earned negative 11% during that same period of time. Why? Because we made irrational decisions. We follow when it goes up. We sell when it goes down, which, of course, if we had a crystal ball, what would we do, Brad? We'd buy low and sell high. And people do the exact inverse of that. Huh, that's interesting because, I mean, when I was doing it, it's like, okay, um, you know, I feel like oh, I got to protect my money. I got I to gotta worry here and there. And I really wasn't thinking until I actually looked at the note right here, and that was building an emergency fund. That is something that I should really be looking at. Even at my age, still, I have money, but I need to look at that, don't I? Absolutely. I mean, it's interesting how quickly people forget. You know, we go back to the COVID crash in 2020. I was actually one of the knuckleheads that was stuck on a cruise ship, of all things, off the coast of Chile. But nonetheless, I was fielding calls from clients. And the, the, the real issue, I mean, a lot of my clients are surgeons, so they, they weren't doing surgeries at that time. And in many cases, that meant they weren't making money. And so having an emergency reserve to protect you for three to five to six months of your, your salary, I think is very valuable during those time frames, uh, just to alleviate some of those stressors. Yeah. Okay, so now let's talk about our credit cards because that is something that people get emotional with on using, not so much saving or getting rid of them because they're like, you know what, um, okay, I'll use this now and, and I'll be okay and then I'll pay for it later or something like that. But that takes us more into debt, doesn't it? Well, and the, and the data would suggest that those are habits that just continue and continue and continue where we're going to say, all right, I'll pay this off eventually and we don't. Uh, I think 40% or so of Americans have credit card debt. And the challenge is it spirals very, very quickly. And then all of a sudden, do if it becomes dire, do we then need to go out and identify a third party to assist with some type of payoff? Because we simply cannot get out from underneath it. Uh, and, and look, Brad, you know the answer is just don't get into debt. If we can't afford something, we can't pay cash for something, do not buy it. I like that thinking, and that's where I've started to go. Um, also, I've learned to take my ego out of things. I think sometimes we, we, we let that ego play with us a little bit when it comes to money. Why, why do we do that? <laughs> well, I, I think that there are all kinds of biases that we have. We don't have the time today, Brad, to go through all of those, whether it's recency bias or ego bias or overconfidence bias. Uh, I, I think at the end of the day, people think that they're in control of their own lives but they don't have the systems in place, the processes in place to ensure that they are in fact in control of their lives. And let's be frank, people want it now. We don't wanna wait six months. Like I, I mean, harken back to when I was a kid and I would have an allowance. My parents would say, look, Anthony, you need to save this portion of your allowance because if you wanna buy something, you can then buy it. There are some folks who just never learned that lesson, I guess. Uh, so thanks, mom and dad, for that lesson. But uh, at the end of the day, if we can't afford it, we shouldn't be buying it. But people just, that emotional impulse is so strong. Yeah. So, okay, let's talk retirement because, again, I think, and this kind of like carries off to everybody. I was going to say more younger people who aren't thinking about retirement because they're still working. They're kind of like, you know what, I'm good to go. And then the older ones are like, well, I think I'm okay. But retirement planning should be always, no matter if you're retired already or if you're, if you're thinking about, you know, uh, retirement down the line. Am I right? A hundred percent. And the reality is, Brad, if we have a plan that has been stress tested thousands of times against various market scenarios, one of the things we say to all of our clients is, would you like to know if you're on track? 
because we have the tools to be able to know that. So regardless of if you're younger, middle-aged or older, if we know that we're stress test and our plan is going to achieve the desired result, all this up and down stuff in the market becomes background noise. I'll tell you the best advice that we can possibly give anybody is to tune it out. Turn off CNBC, turn off Fox Business News, turn off CNN, turn off Fox. I know you guys in the TV are, you're like, no, no, we don't want to turn off the TV. <laughs> but the reality is just background noise that influences people to make irrational decisions. And, and if we're confident in our plan and we're disciplined in our approach, we're going to be all right. Yeah. I think the, also the big thing is sitting down with someone like you and not thinking, as we, as you said, uh, that we could do it ourselves. That's our ego. So very important. So how can someone get a hold of you? Uh, great, Brad. Yeah. Email address or website is www.mosaicfa.com. Like F is in Foxtrot, A is in alpha.com. Mosaicfa.com. Perfect. Anthony, I'm looking forward to seeing you when I uh, win that uh, Mega Million or Powerball. So I'll come check you out. We'll hang All out. Right, I'm glad to help. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Anthony. Cheers.